Welcome! In this video, I'll show you two ways on dealing with partial and multi-valued functions. So partial functions are functions where certain input values might not give a return value, and multi-value functions are those for which a given input value might return multiple values. Now, either of these cases can't be uh, represented as standard uh, Haskell functions, so we need to come up with strategies for dealing with them. Now, for the first problem, where a function might not return a value, there's a nice type in Haskell called the maybe data type, and it's defined as follows. So data maybe a is equal either to nothing or it's equal to just a. And there's some deriving going on, so uh, we derive show uh, ek and ord like so. Now, the idea behind the maybe data type is that it can represent objects which might not exist. So uh, if the object doesn't exist, then we just uh, have the nothing value for this type. But if the object does exist, then we use the just constructor and give just the corresponding value that we want the object to have. Now, because maybe is implemented in the standard library, uh, it's going to cause problems if I try to redefine it here. So I'm going to comment out this code to demonstrate how maybe works. So as I mentioned, if we want to just have like a given value, then I can just use the just constructor. So I just three would be something of type maybe int, for instance. But if the value doesn't exist, then I would just uh, return nothing. So nothing is also like a fine uh, value for the maybe data type. I think here it's easiest if I just uh, start with an example. So we saw that the head function, which should return uh, the first element of a list. And so now one way uh, one could implement this is as follows. So you would say that head prime of the empty list is equal to some error. So we return an error. So like, I don't know, list is empty. And otherwise we return the first uh, element. So head prime of x x's should just be the first uh, value in the list x. Now, the problem with this is that, well, if we run head prime with the empty list, it'll cause an error. And it's best to avoid runtime errors if possible, because uh, we can't say ahead of time before we run our program if we'll run into an error or not. So somehow this is uh, bad if you have these uh, possible runtime errors, which you can't reason about in advance. So a better way of writing uh, head is to, instead of uh, returning just an A, you return a maybe a. Okay, so how do we redefine the function in this case? So in the case where we give it the empty list, instead of just causing an error, we're going to return this nothing value. So this is like saying there's no return value, but in fact, uh, this is actually a value of the maybe data type. So we're not actually causing our program to crash. We're indeed returning something. It's just like a placeholder to say that the, there is no value defined. On the other hand, well, if we uh, run head double prime with x x's, it should return uh, just x. So here we can't just write x like we did above because x would be of type a and not of maybe a. But here we can use this just constructor to somehow wrap our value uh, in a constructor that's also of type maybe. Okay, so uh, if I reload my script here and I uh, demonstrate so head double prime of the empty list is nothing but if I give it some list it'll return just the first element of that list okay so the maybe data type gives you a way of representing values which might not exist and it manages to do so uh, without like causing errors in your code now another way you could uh, deal with this problem is instead of returning like a specific value you could return a list of values and in that case, the empty list would re represent like not having a return value, while singleton lists would represent having a unique return value. But you could also have like multiple return values by returning a list that has multiple elements. So following this idea, a third version of the head function would work as follows. So we give it a list of a's, but now we return also a list of a's. And so head triple prime of the empty list will, in this case, just be the empty list to represent that we don't have a return value. On the other hand, uh, head triple prime of uh, x x's should return like a unique value, which in this case is x. So we return a list containing x to say that uh, 
This is like the list of return values. So if we reload here and call our function head triple prime on this list, you see I return the singleton list containing one, for instance, or if I run it on the empty list, I just return the empty list to symbolize that there's no return values. Now this strategy also works for uh, functions that could return multiple values. So let's say we want to implement the square root function, but we want to do so that it returns both the positive and negative square roots of some number. So in this case, uh, square root prime will be a function that takes a double, and it'll return a list of doubles, namely both square roots of the original number. In other words, square root prime of some x is just equal to the list containing, well, minus uh, square root x and, well, plus square root x, like this. If I now reload, we can uh, see what this does. So square root prime of, let's say, 4 should return uh, the list containing minus 2 and 2. So here square root prime is like a multi-valued function, so it returns several values. And, well, I guess here I also should say that uh, in the case where we do uh, square root prime of uh, 0, we should just return a single value, so it's just going to be uh, 0. So that way I don't have like uh, minus 0 and 0 uh, like appearing twice in this list. Okay, so let's make sure that uh, still works. So if I do square root prime of 0, I get just a singleton list containing 0. Hence, by representing the output of a function as a list, you can encode functions that either return no values, return a single value, or return multiple values. Now, one problem that using the strategy creates is that, well, now, for instance, head double prime is a function which takes a list of a's and returns a maybe a. But let's say I want to now do something with this first element of the list. Let's say I have a function which uh, goes from a to b. Well, in that case, I can't directly compose head double prime uh, with that function because here uh, I'm returning something of type maybe a. So somehow I have to unpack the value I receive in order to apply a further function which takes an a and returns a b. And the similar thing goes for when I'm returning lists. So here I can't just compose this with another function which takes a double and returns something else. Rather, I first have to somehow unpack the values in the list and apply that function to each of the values. Now, in fact, this problem isn't as bad as it might seem because there's some nice patterns you can use in order to convert like a function from A to B to a function going from maybe A to maybe B. And similarly, that you can take a function going from A to B and convert it to a function that takes a list of A's and produces a list of B's. So this is usually called um, F mapping in Haskell. So there's uh, a certain type class called functor, which uh, has f map implemented for uh, its uh, members. And maybe and lists are both members of type class functor. Now, for the most part, I'm just mentioning this terminology so that if you encounter in future, you'll somehow have something to relate to. But I'll be directly implementing the corresponding f map methods for maybe and lists. So let's start with the version for maybe. So I'll call this f to maybe. Uh, but as I said, it's implemented also in the standard library as just fmap for maybe. So f to maybe should take a function going from uh, a to b, and it should return a function going from maybe a uh, to maybe b. So somehow I'm lifting this function going from a to b to a function going from maybe a to maybe b. Okay, so now I need to say what f to maybe should do in several cases. So if I do f to maybe of f together with an argument of type maybe a, okay, so I'm taking this uh, first uh, function here and I'm also taking an argument of type maybe a. So an argument of type maybe a could either be nothing, uh, so I need to define what it does in this case, or it could be just some value. So uh, maybe f of just some value x. Here I also need to make the definition. Okay, so if the value is nothing, well, then f should just uh, map nothing to nothing. So this new version of the function will take uh, any, well, value of maybe a, and if that value is nothing, it'll just return nothing over here. On the other hand, if the value is just x for some value x of type a, well, then I return uh, just uh, f of x. So somehow I'm unpacking this value x here, I'm applying the function f to it, and then I'm repacking it in, in just. Uh, 
OK, let's reload and uh, demonstrate how you would use this. So let's say I want to multiply just 2 by uh, the number 3. So now it's not going to work to just write like uh, just 2 times 3 or something like that. The, the reason is that this multiplication function here, um, well, needs to take like two numbers of the same type. So it would have, if 3 is an int here, then 2 would also have to be an int. So I can't just multiply, uh, I don't know, just 2 with 3 like this. However, I can lift the multiplication by 3 to something which takes a maybe int and returns a maybe int. And I can do this by uh, using this f to maybe function. So I can do f to maybe of times 3, and this will return a function which now goes from maybe int to uh, maybe int. And if I now apply uh, this function here to the value, uh, let's say, just 2, then I get just 6. So what's happened is that somehow I've lifted this function here uh, to a function which can take a maybe int and then returns a maybe int. All right, so the way this would be useful is, for instance, if you have this head double prime function here, which uh, takes a list of a's and returns a maybe a. Let's say this is a list of ints and it returns like a maybe int. Well, if I want to like then multiply the first element of this list by 3, then I would lift the multiplication by 3 to something which uh, can take like a maybe int and again returns a maybe int. So in this way, by lifting uh, these types of functions, I can uh, compose them with things that uh, might not return a value, so that might return nothing. Okay, so that's how uh, you would lift functions to maybe. A uh, similar thing works for lists. So I'll call this f to list, and we'll see that it's actually something we already know in disguise. So here I want to take a function which goes from a to b, and then I want to produce a function which takes a list of a's and uh, produces a list of b's. And uh, if you think about this type signature, it's exactly the type signature of map. And in fact, we'll just be like implementing map again, because map is the lifting of a function to a list. So f to list of some function f and the empty list here. So the idea is I want to apply f to every um, element in the list. So in this case, it should just return the empty list because there is no elements to apply f to. On the other hand, f to list of f and some x x's, what should this be? Well, I want to apply f to every element in the list. So here I'm now going to apply f to x, and I'm going to append this value to what I got previously from f to list f of the x's. So this is going to be appended to uh, f uh, to list of f x's, like so. All right, and now you see that, well, here it's uh, underlining this in blue because it's saying I could just use map to do this. Uh, the reason for this is that this function is just map, so. All right, let's uh, reload and uh, make sure this is actually doing what we want. So let's uh, do f to list of, let's say, the times 3 function again, and I'm applying it to a list of uh, ints, 1, 2, 3. So here you see that uh, I've just applied this function times 3 to each element in my starting list. And this way, I've managed to lift this original function to a function now going between uh, lists. And again, the way you would use this, uh, for instance, in uh, this case, where you have the head implemented with, uh, with returning a list, if you wanted to like multiply now the return value of this function by 3, you would lift times 3 uh, to a function that goes between lists using f to list, and then you would uh, compose it with the uh, head triple prime. Now, if you ever want to do this on your own, you should just use uh, fmap instead and not write these functions out for yourself. So uh, fmap here of uh, times 3, uh, 1, 2, 3, like this, uh, does exactly the same thing. So fmap is this uh, standard method which uh, exists for all um, types of type class functor, and list is one of those, or also maybe is one of those. So I can also do fmap times 3 of, like, let's say, just 2. And here it's complaining because I uh, forgot some parentheses, so if I uh, actually add the correct parentheses, you see I get, uh, I get just 6. So fmap works on anything that is of type class functor, including maybe and lists. I'll conclude this video by showing you two more additional pieces of structure which can be useful.
So both uh, maybe and lists have these. So the first one is that you can take like a value of type A and convert it to a maybe A. And then similarly, you can take a value of type A and convert it to a list of A's. So this is like converting to maybe uh, and lists. So let's call the first one uh, to maybe. So it takes something of type A and returns a maybe A. And well, what should it do? Well, to maybe of X should just be X, okay, like this. So basically, to maybe is just like the just constructor. That's why it's uh, also underlined in blue because I could, in principle, re uh, remove the argument X here because this function is just doing what the just constructor does. In a similar manner, there's a function called to list, which takes an A and returns a list of A's. Okay, what should to list do on some argument X? Well, in this case, I just return the singleton list containing X. So this gives me a way of somehow lifting an element of type A to an element of list of A's. And similar here, I can lift an element of type A to an element of type maybe A. The final piece of structure, which I'll show you, uh, I'll call flattening. So this uh, gives you a way of somehow flattening down nested versions of maybe or nested lists. So maybe it'll become clearer if I and just give you the first definition. So flatten maybe will take something of type maybe, maybe A, and just return something of type maybe A. So here I have these two levels of applying maybe, and I'm flattening it down to just one single level of maybe. Okay, so how is flatten maybe defined? Well, if uh, I look at this uh, value here, so because it's of type maybe something, it could just be nothing, okay? So if it's just nothing, then I want to also return nothing. So nothing should be flattened down to nothing. Uh, on the other hand, it could be uh, just some value of this type, okay? And there are again two cases. So a value of maybe A can either be again nothing or it could be just uh, some X. So it could be just nothing here. If it's just nothing, then I also want to flatten it down to nothing. But uh, in the interesting case where it's uh, just just some value x, then I just uh, return just x like this. Okay, so this gives me a way of uh, flattening down nested maybes into just a single like level of maybes. And a similar thing works for lists. So I can write a function called flatten list, which takes a list of list of a's and flatten it down just to a one level list of A's. So how is this gonna work? So, uh, well, a list of lists of A's could be the empty list. So in this case, I don't have any elements of list of A's in there, and I want to flatten down the empty list just to the empty list. So that's uh, sort of the base case. And then there's the uh, interesting case where my list is non-empty. So here now this X is actually a list of A's. So it's the like the first element of whatever uh, list I'm looking at, but this is itself a list of A's. And so what I can do is I can just concatenate this list of A's with the previously like flattened list that I've accumulated so far. So I can do a flatten list X's like this. Okay, so maybe I'll just demonstrate how a flattened list works. So it can flatten like a list of lists. So let's say I have uh, three sublists here. The first one is like one, two, three, uh, four, five, and then six, like this. And you see it gets rid of these uh, intermediate like lists. So it just flattens everything down to a single level uh, list. Okay, so um, we've seen several uh, different pieces of structure. So the first one is this F mapping where we can somehow lift a function going from A to B to a function going from maybe A to maybe B, or to a function going from list of A's to list of B's. Then we've also seen that we can somehow convert values of type A to just values of type maybe A, and similarly for lists. So this is somehow adding this uh, layer of maybe or list around the value. Whereas if we have too many layers, so if we like accumulated several layers of maybe, we can somehow flatten them down to a single one, and the same thing goes for lists as well. And now combining all of these different operations gives you a lot of flexibility in dealing with functions that return 
uh, objects of type maybe or a return lists. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say for this video. Uh, maybe this is not uh, directly relevant at the moment for you, but maybe in some future time you'll uh, encounter a case where like you have a function which isn't defined on certain values, and then maybe you can think about the maybe data type and how you would use it in your code.